everybody and welcome back to the EMEA Masters. We're getting ready to go into our second game of the day, which is actually two of our new regions going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. So I'm really excited to see these guys. We've got GK, uh, our Arabic team playing. And then we also have uh, the Wildcats. I'm not going to say the full name. It's a very long one. Uh, and they are playing over from the TCL or our Turkish League. I'm very excited to see these guys because... It's it's a two new regions represented here at the EMEA Masters. You know, ever since the expansion outwards and adding more teams and more regions to the uh, to the league, we now get to see these guys kind of throw down uh, versus each other. I feel like this is very much a uh, a pride thing of saying, you know, we're the best newcomers in in this league. I, I'm, I'm um, super excited for this one. Okay, um, newsflash: TCL is probably the best <laughs> newcomers yeah. in this league. Uh, Look, of course. Wildcats have won four out of five finals that they have attended over in yeah. Turkey. They've done two MSIs. They've gone to Worlds. Uh, I've heard that people love them over in Turkey as well. So they're a huge name. They've got a huge fan base behind them. And of course, coming now into EMEA Masters, they're coming with a very freaking promising roster. Uh, I heard that uh, Wildcats always had full Turkish lineups, but in this particular one right here, Destroy and Bao coming over from Korea and Destroy Take it from his name. This guy is a carry top laner. The Gwens, the Nas, the, he's played Rise's top, um, Rumble, Cannon. Very heavy AP towards that top side of the map, but massive carry potential coming in from the Korean top laner. Yeah, absolutely. And on the other side of it for GK, they're a team who actually have a very diverse roster from all over the place, actually. I mean, most notably for me and you, uh, their jungler is Viking who is formerly Dusty's? Am I right? I can't remember. Yes. I, can't, I should remember. Yeah, that's <laughs> yes. right. I'm right. Uh, Dusty's, Dusty's jungler there, Viking. Uh, someone who is also a very carry orientated jungler can really look to set up himself a team there. Got to give it to uh, to GU there with doing the... Uh, doing the attack on titan post, <laughs> this, uh, this post you know there. what i love this i love this uh so gk only dropped a singular game during the run through play-ins uh yeah. if you ask them they're gonna tell you hey we kind of like went through the arabic league we didn't necessarily bother too much we're just preparing for eu masters uh, or emia masters sorry uh all along and i've got some really nice fun facts about Go the team then. for you. Are you ready for it? Far so away. I talked to some lovely people from the Arabic League and they gave me some really cute fun facts. One is that their support, DCAP, is called DGAP, as in G-A-P. DGAP, D -Gap. D -Gap okay. yes. Yep. And of course, Satorius, we've known him. He's played in the ERLs for a very long time. Is now uh, renamed to Set. Torius, because of uh, the massive amount of games that he has on set <laughs> and the fact that he gets the champion band against him. Uh, of course, these are just a few fun facts for the team. The fact that their mid jungle uh, and support duo is what we need to keep our eyes on because these three guys are linking up so freaking well. And I want to remind everyone that if you have watched the LEC, you know that from the winter split, where it was a very bot-centric meta, into the spring split, the meta has switched just a little bit. And it's a little bit more about the support, roaming with the jungler, facilitated by the mid laner, rather than a very heavy bot-centric meta where everybody just moves in place towards the bot side of the map. So for GK to come through the Arabic League with that playstyle already seems very promising for the match against Wildcats. Yeah, I feel like, you know, while a lot of people will be looking towards Wildcats as the team in this matchup, I don't think we should write off uh, GK at all. I think there's some really, really stacked players on this roster. And it's, you know, this is very much about them putting some dominance down and kind of asserting their place within the EMEA Masters. Already bans going through the Sejuani, the Rumble, the Gragas denied away. We'll see what uh, the Wildcats look to ban oh. away as their next one, the Elise, interestingly. Wow, okay. So I'm just really excited to see that Rumble and Gragas have been taken out. Both of these champions, uh, Destroy, uh, likes to play towards the top side of the map. Again, the likes of Kennen and uh, Gwen still up uh, for grabs. But the fact that they're playing on the side of GK, so defensive towards the top side of the map, banning out two AP top laners from the side of Destroy, uh, is a little bit questionable. The other side from Wildcats, 
there's a lot of uh, Viking hammering right here. He's a Zwani. He's known for his Elise. He's also known for his Rek'Sai. He doesn't necessarily peek it too much because it's more of a niche peek, but he does have oh it on the back word. of his hand. We were told that there were more... Uh, Viking has fallen more onto a more of a facilitating kind of champion. Of course, Satorius uh, is going to flash the set for us. I wouldn't be surprised if that was an AD carry B1. The Rakan is up. The Zaya is up as well. Yeah, I feel like you have to take Rakan or Zaya because Wildcats literally get Zaya Rakan next rotation if you don't pick it up. So they are going to give Rin over to that Zaya. Uh, and I feel like on the side of Wildcats now, they have to pick Rakan. They can't give GK the Rakan Zaya combo. We've talked quite a lot about it at the beginning of the day, but Zaya is very dominating right now, very oppressive in the meta. You pair her up with the Rakan as well, and that is an even more painful lane to be playing into so expecting one of these two to be that rakan although they actually lock in the thresh I there so thresh. that looks like it will be their answer to this so deciding actually they feel comfortable playing into the rakan zaya uh and quite happy to pick up this thresh here they don't have to go for their eddy carry they may just look for a good jungler to kind of set them up for whatever they're going to go for next now but they actually do just lock in the Aphelios. That's what I was going to say. I feel like Wildcat will drop jungler to 4-5. Uh, Zaya is a type of champion that doesn't necessarily get countered by any jungler because of the ability that she has on her ultimate. I would be surprised if their account wasn't paired up with her here as well. So I think making sure that you lock in a very strong, stable bot lane that can deal uh, on their own with the Zaya account in the likes of Phyllis and Thresh is more important. Uh, of course, Vi is huge versus immobile carries. And they're going to actually go with the Annie here. Annie, which could end up in the mid lane. Again, a lot of set up mid laners have risen up for the carry junglers with the likes of Diego, Vi, Lee Sin, uh, and so on and so forth. We'll see what they'll choose to play from the set of Wildcats. I wouldn't be surprised again if I saw the likes of something like Alessandra or a Syndra to create space around the affiliates. Yeah. I actually really like this Annie pickup here because, like you said, it's super flexible. Like, Ooh. they could be having this as the intention to be the support but or the mid laner and then see where what the next bounce look like and then can flex around. The Jarvan is going to get picked up here for the side of uh, the Wildcats. And now moving over to that second ban phase, I'm curious where Wildcats think this Annie is going to go and where they're going to look to put their attention down. Maybe they just look to ban out the top side now, make sure Satorius doesn't get the likes of a... Uh, doesn't get the likes of the um the you set for himself but they go for the blitz ban thinking the annie might be mid i'm thinking right here that wildcats are gonna ban our rakan and blitzcrank just so they can force potentially the annie to go towards that bot side of the map and then gk are gonna have to pick a different mid laner to pair up with the via of course ari is one of the huge uh names out there that pairs up really well with the Vi because she can follow up uh, onto the ultimate. Again, Blitz Ranger are kind of out of the picture. The only AP top lane that's left for Destroy uh, is going to be that cannon. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be banned out. It's not. It's actually going to be left open. And surprisingly enough, a cannon with no tools to push him out of the picture, I think would be an ideal scenario for Wildcats. And so far, GK do not have any tools to push that cannon out. Yeah, I totally agree there. Well, we'll see what the, pack, the, uh, the pick is going to be here for the side of the Wildcats. Just waiting it down the timer a little bit. Not entirely sure where that Annie's going to go. So they just pick up the Lissandra, another facilitating uh, mid laner. Like we saw in that previous game, the amount of impact that uh, we got out of Lissandra in our last game, unbelievably big. Now, it's a bit different because the Zaya does have that nope button in the in the Featherstorm. So you can just get up and avoid the, uh, avoid the Lissandra for a little bit of time. And maybe wait for the Annie to kind of land the stun onto them. But now moving over to the side of GK, they got to round out this comp. Are they going to put the Annie in the mid lane? Are they going to look to put something Ooh. else elsewhere? They go for the Malphite in the top lane to give Satorius hmm. a bit of agency up there. And the Pike is going to get picked up as the support. Um, I would be very surprised if that wasn't a Kennen insta lock right here. There is no, absolutely no champion that can take Kennen out of the picture. And even though I agree with you, Zaya has a very powerful weapon in her hands in the likes of her ultimate to get away from ultimates like Lissandra. You can only press it once. Once this is down, uh, it, it becomes very difficult to walk back, especially through uh, a choke point. I said he doesn't have any more AP carries uh, in the top lane. He brings he brings out another one. He brings out the Vladimir. Love seeing this. I think picking Malphite right here, it's in the right mindset as if, yeah, Velos is extremely immobile. You can hit him. But you know you're going to be playing against an AP top lane. Destroy plays exclusively 
AP top lane is only towards the top side of the map. So that's a little bit of a head scratcher when it comes to uh, yeah. GK and uh, the draft. Of course, we knew for Dig Up, he likes to play. Uh, I just call him Dig Up. That's what he is from now on. Uh, we know he likes to play the likes of Pike. So I'd love to see. I, I would actually love to keep the camera towards that bottom of the map for the first few levels just yeah. to see how this pike will pan out because we've seen Hillisang on the LEC. He can take on the first queue, he can take your flash, on the second queue, he'll take your life. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's, it's weird because I feel like, obviously, isolated right now, top can be pretty rough, but it's weird because normally you're like, okay, well, it's a carry top laner versus like a tank top laner. So the tank will just scale into the late game, be a team fight nuisance, but it's also a flat of it. He just pops Ghost, runs into the team, Humor Plague ease, turns into his little ketchup puddle and just avoids all damage ketchup, and it just okay. ah, it's the ketchup puddle that's what i call it okay so Trouble, you worked this, me long enough this is going to be destroy's first vladimir me. game for 2023 and his entire career he's had two vladimir games a hundred percent win rate with a seven kda on the champ Whoa. A little bit of an Easter egg for you guys. Just a little, uh, little one. Nice to see the, uh, the rune choices where everybody is at. Nothing really out of the ordinary on that front. Uh, I guess first strike over Airy. I know there's been uh, varying opinions on that over time, but first strike is going to be the pickup here for Jinyu. But everyone else pretty much starting out the same. It did look like DK, uh, GK, sorry, were thinking about uh, a potential late invade or something like that coming out, so they grouped up. Oh, I love this. Just cover Honestly, that bot side. Nah, I love this because that make you make sure you take control of the bot side bushes because you have a pike. The fact that the pike will be in fog war the entire time, you show that not only they cover, so no wards go down. In case you don't necessarily look for a kill when you go to the bot lane, you look for lane dominance. And having a pike, you need that fog of war down there. Having the extra sweeper as well to take away any vision that Wildcats have. They've already procced the... Ooh, first Q miss. They've already procced the bomb plating off of the Thresh as well. So whoever you hit on this pike, you could actually go in. Uh, if we can hover over on the pike and see the cooldown of that Q, that would also be awesome just to see the next time he's going to look to potentially go for it. Oh, right now, Satorius so, to destroy taking um, a fight. And Satorius losing level one to Vladimir. That uh, might be the saddest thing you could ever do is lose, lose level one to Vladimir in a trade, but. Okay, but you're playing so much fight. damage. Yeah, okay, okay, true. I'm thinking of it as a mid laner. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one, but it is still pretty rough. As a hook goes wide by Decap. Do you see uh, Parvis just land the flay onto Rin for a bit of a chunk, but they are down now on that level lead, so. Wildcats do need to fall back a little bit and play this uh play this next few moments just a little bit a little bit calmer. Honestly, They're gonna get shoved in. Very well played by GK again. That control of the bush, level one with the entire team, gave them that level two because they had lane dominance, they could push forward, they were hiding into fog of war in the bushes, they pushed for that level two first, which means Bow and Powers have to play underneath the towers for a while. They got that level two, they get to roam first, potentially get some deeper vision uh, into opponent jungle. Unfortunately, they do not have their um, the trinkets up and available yet but they tried to see if they could spot Java anywhere near bot lane. It's going to be a negatory. Viking is also going to be passing towards that bot side of the map. So if Java chose to do any shenanigans towards the bot side, he would be there to cover. Elramir, though, is pulling uh, some sort of crazy Malbrank play where he cleared towards bot lane, but then he's headed towards top lane because that poor Malphite has been suffering oh. and Destroy is running Ignite as well. This is not what he wants dun, dun, at dun, all. Dun, 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 dun. Jumping in, Satoris to get a teleport to him. Flashes away, destroys, taking a couple of tower shots. It's gonna blood puddle now. Hold in on. the bottom oh. side, Ren's damage. He just juggled those feathers gorgeously and secures the kill onto the fresh. They now have potentially incoming Viking onto Bao. Bao's gonna get forced under tower. He knows he's in danger. It's gonna get a bit of health back from the Calibum. They got the teleport coming in. They're gonna bring them down. They get the hook, they get the lockdown. But that just forces the teleport out. Decap is getting out. Just about able to sliver away from that one. A okay. one for one globally. Bao cleansed there as well towards the end. But let's look at this uh, bot lane fight again because we missed it. Does Decap hit a Q? No, it's actually Paris that hits a Q onto the Zaya. And the Grass Life Viking, but let me tell you about my Lord and Savior, 
hail of freaking blades because the amount of burst damage you can do with three auto attacks onto your opponent especially when you're playing pike is absolutely enormous and you guys saw it right there they burned through that thresh so quickly again once you take that bomb plating down from the thresh he is a pseudo tank he absolutely melts really well played from the gk uh, bot lane their plan so far has worked wonders one kill onto the zaya they've got bot lane pressure the entire time which means their jungler can play towards that bot side of the map potentially we'll see a few uh invades as well from viking as well having that bot lane with him and the priority that they've given him through bot side as for top lane uh I say FF, wait for uh, Malphite to get his items, use him for that one ultimate, and pray that the Vladimir will not be huge enough to run you over. Yeah, it is pretty scary. He's already got Lucidity Boots. Level 5, obviously level 9 is the big spike because you have Transfusion Max at that point, so you have basically infinite sustain and quite a lot yep. of damage. Uh, but he's level 5, he's got Lucidity Boots. He's quite happy just to kind of play it chill. As uh, We did see... Eremar in the area um, did just flag and drag over, but it's not going to be getting himself into any danger. Is there? The cap is just going to be putting down Nick Ward to make sure that he has control of this bush because he knows that his bot lane is structure shopping. So he needs to be playing this nice and chill underneath the tower. But just taking a quick look at the junglers, both of them are on the same side of the map as Viking and Eremar are in close proximity to one another. Viking looks to start up the dragon because he's Very got nice. pressure in mid, he's got pressure in bot, and he can translate this fairly easily into an objective. But it does look like maybe Wildcat coming in in to try and deny the flash, Ooh. the tippers, the lockdown, and Rin secures himself his second kill. Lawless. I love it. I love the aggression coming in from GK because Wildcats just want to scale. You want to leave the Vladimir alone to scale. You want to leave the Aphelios alone to scale. And you've got a pike on the other hand side. 100% kill participation. It's only two kills. But Dikap has been in both of them and he's enabled them. Really nice fast TV from you oh. as well. Oh, Satoru's Salty is going to go a little bit into the catch up pool, as you called it. And he has to back because there's no oh, mana. No. He's in danger. Satorius, he's gonna get run down. The ignite oh. ticking as Destroy finds the kill. Hook lands onto the Zaya. No ultimate available right now to Rin. He has Flash, he has no cleanse. Flash is to reposition the feathers as he finds himself one, but it is gonna get answered out. Battle's got red and white, so Decap needs to say goodnight. He's gonna try and swim forward with the hook. Maybe he can find it. Not gonna find the opportunity. A one for one bot lane. Oof. Okay, so all in all, it's a two for one in favor of Wildcats. Destroy. With the solo kill onto Satoris, again, a little bit questionable from Draft as well. Malphite is not notoriously known for being good against AP champions. And finally, they're going to choose to make the swap. Maybe they'll leave the Malphite mid lane. But let's see again what happened in the bot lane because Rin has been hooked two on two in these fights. No cleanse available for Rin means that he takes all the damage from the Ignite and the hook. They do manage to trade one for one, and both the kills are going to go to the AD carries. But Rin needs to be a little bit more careful when it comes to these hooks, because if he doesn't, if the hook doesn't land there, he can get out scot free. Oh, uh, yeah. Jeez, probably in danger. No! Viking comes in to save the day. Jiyu survives. Absolutely clutch play there by Viking. Has just been playing like a superstar in this game. 1-0-1 one, one right now and is just able to constantly catch Elramar out whenever he tries to go for these plays. Really, really clutch stuff coming in from this guy. And honestly, playing very, very well. We are gonna see the play coming in. Rin this time throws down the feathers, gets the blade cooler black, and that is gonna be the kill. Perius goes down, Rin secures a double. That's a 5-1 Zaya. This game is gonna be hard for Wildcat. Okay, I'm gonna try a pun, okay? Can you say he rins them? He rins them. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Fantastic it's, play for the GK just... uh, bot lane. Honestly, I am absolutely mind blown that Wildcats would go in for that play. Because Wildcats were the ones that enabled that play. They started, they looked for it, oh. and now Wildcats are looking for a pick of themselves. Finally, we're going to see some mid jungle duo pressure because having that Lissandra, not having used her uh, at all for the ultimate, maybe here. I thought that hook was going to be a little bit more. I'm not going to lie. I got a little carried away on that one. You get excited uh, you... for the pike. I, I always get excited. When a pike lands a hook, you're like, this is it. Here we go. The resets. 
no, not going to happen. Uh, G does want to kind of burn through that passive to make sure that they can keep the wave clear oh, off. Rinsky wanted, 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 wanted. Gale Force forward. Bow. I just, this, you can't win it. You just can't win it. You've got a Noon Quiver to a Gale Force. Like, it is, it is donezo, that fight. I'm just going to give props for that level one from GK because he completely and utterly snowballed that bot lane. Oh, oh hello. They're going to throw everything down. Yeah. Tibbers get summoned up. GU's trying to survive for a little bit longer. Decat does have the execute, but it's not going to be quite in range yet. Vikings closing in, jumps in forward. They jump off the top. He tries to catch him out. He can't follow the E up. So that's going to be one with the execute from the decap. He gets the knock up to another one, but the second reset is not going to happen. The shield is too much. And all of a sudden, Wildcats turn the fight around. The flash comes out. The shielding, they're healing. It was so well played there by Wildcat. I think GK forgot where their money lies. And it's down that bot lane. Rin holds the entire, well, I was going to say gold lead, but there's no gold lead anymore for GK. What a fantastic turnaround from Wildcats, bringing their Vladimir down as well. And as we see again, Giyu is going to take so much damage from three members right there from Wildcats. He's going to pop the ult. He's going to burn all his burst. Once you burn all your burst, that's it with Annie. You kind of like a sitting duck. And Elramir here is actually going to face check. You'll see that the Pike does get one reset onto the Lissandra, but misses the second one just about. Oh my oh. god, that push onto the Jarvan, and the second Vladimir comes in. Well, that's all the gold from the set of Wildcats, right? He's gotten the two kills up the top lane. I think he's got two tar yeah, he's got two tar platings as well. So 2,000 gold lead for this Vladimir. He's got his first mythic as well. You cannot play towards the top side of your GK. You need that Zaya there. She's holding all your gold. Yeah, to be fair, that was a pretty rough fight when you, you're like, yeah, your fed member is not there. They are just bot lane. And Wildcat, they are going to respond with an attempt on the Rift Herald, but I feel with GU moving over and this time the Zaya being in position, they are going to have to give this one up. But there could be a crossplay map uh, towards that dragon. Oh, no, I'm that. in trouble. They rotate down. Satorius is in a world of trouble. I don't know if he has ultimate up and available. He's going to get himself nope. caught by the hooky. No flash, no escape. Gets a bit of movement speed off. And he <laughs> survives with a sliver of HP. Satorius limps out of that one. Uh, I see that Satorius might be going for Rod of Ages. I don't know. It's a Bissell Mask. Okay, I hope He's in so. an AP matchup. Yeah. Oh, yeah I mean, he's got I'll, your I'll magic. So. Okay, so the question is, the question is right here. Oh, uh, whether you face into the Lissandra or the Vladimir, it's a losing match. So I'm not sure Abyssal Mask is the best into Aphelios. Ring is going to get caught again. That's have the ultimate for safety. I guess he got the ignite, <laughs> I guess. Going to summon the Herald here in the top side. Is that do you just going to try and clear through this? Should be able to do so. More money. That tower very, very low off the back of that one. Yeah, a lot of gold. I mean, that's a Night Harvester 3 0 Vladimir. GK do get themselves their second dragon of the game, but that top side, that's not a, that's not like a little bleed. That is a gushing wound for them right now on the top yeah. side. And G, G is having to stay up there to cover it because Saturius can't hold this wave. He just can't hold in this matchup for a bit. Not until that Abyssal Mask is finished. And he's significantly down to gold. I mean, you can see the individual gold leads on the screen, but two and a half grand over to destroy over Satorius. Even the bot gap's not that big. Okay, I'm just going to continue my rant a little bit because I Go don't on. think that... I think Satoris has already lost in the side lane. Building more yeah. AP is just going to make him more and more vulnerable playing into the Aphelios. Because if Aphelios flashes the ult, the initial ult from the Malphite, then this Malphite will melt. You saw what they did to him down the bot lane and Aphelios didn't even have an item completed in that fight. Now the Gale Force uh, has been completed. Extra Crit Cloak in the inventory for Bao as well. And again, to remind everyone, Bao, one of the most talked about AD carries for the entire tournament, playing a very potent champion when it comes to late game and getting rid of big tanks like the likes of Satoris on this Malphite. But at this point, he's fallen so far behind on the, on the Malphite, two levels down onto this Vladimir. He's kind of wandering around the map, trying to pick up any farm. But at this point, you have to give it all to the Zaya. 
which means that this malphite is falling further and further behind. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a rough one on that front. And I'm amazed that they've kind of put this much attention into making sure that he gets uh, that he gets items instead of just making sure that you set up as well as po as possible. I'm curious to your thoughts on this build as well. I, Roa Annie, there's a lot of different options, a lot of different opportunities. Ludens obviously gives you the most bursts just because of the pen you get off the passive. Obviously, you get the burn from Leandri's. Uh, with Tibbers constantly procking that burn. What do you make of the Roa build on Annie? I think this is going to be a Roa possibly into Rylai's for the Annie. This is going to be more of a utility kind of Annie build. I need to survive because right now, <clears throat> if you go towards the Luden or the Leandris, wait, Decap might be in trouble. He's not. Uh, if you go towards the Leandris or um, the Ludens, you're so squishy and Vladimir is so freaking fed right now. And as you can see, Annie is playing towards that side lane and you want to make sure that you cannot get 100% to zero. So I do not mind it. It takes a little bit more to scale, but it's fine. You do have a scale in AD carry, uh, but when it comes to waiting for your Annie to scale and there's Nafelos and Vladimir on the other side, I'm not sure that's the correct path to take. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, Decap needs to be careful. Has got the old swim and dash available to him to be able to clear away from any danger still got a bit of time until this dragon does spawn up so it's interesting to see wildcats put quite a lot of attention towards this bottom side of the map and towards the potential gank onto decap but vision's gonna get cleared out and gk doing a pretty decent job of actually just holding on as a tourist may find himself oh, in ghost. danger he hasn't got the full item the ghost has gone down satorius steals away some of that movement speed with the q ghost actually somewhat wasted here by destroy as Rin is able to avoid a way on that ward that was uh, placed down in the hook from uh, Paris, just in response. They are just going to keep keep holding on to this mid wave. That was a pretty nice try right there from Destroy. Maybe you can get a flash. Maybe you can get the ultimate of Satorius. Satorius holds on. He's built a bunch uh, of MR. Oh, you can see word. his inventory. He purchases even more uh, MR, which is pretty good for him, I guess, on the sideline versus Lissandra and versus Vladimir. But again, uh, there is that threat of the Aphelios. Not a huge threat so far. Just the Gale Force, a pickaxe, and a quick cloak in the inventory. But he will keep on scaling. Now, in terms of the Zaya, we talked a lot in the in the picks and bans about how potent that ultimate is how insanely useful in terms of a, a cataclysm a hook that can land uh, a vladimir that jumps onto you lissandra old moonlight vigil but i'm just gonna say and sort of like build down that myth a little bit this is only one button and this only yeah. applies to one ultimate once that one is down walking into a team fight especially through a choke point becomes so difficult for zaya that if you get caught without a flash or a cleanse, Wait. it could be extremely pro problematic because you do not have a defensive support with you. You've uh, got a pike. Trouble. Viking yes. just used smite to try and deny that camp. Uh, Dragon's up in 20 seconds. It was a 70 second cooldown on his smite. That wasn't like his first charge smite. That was a that was all his charges gone now. So they now have to basically play this a little bit more calm and collected because Eromar has smite. Viking does not. He jumps in forwards. Peels away backwards immediately. No, okay. Satorius has roamed over. Here's the trick. I do not think Wildcats will start this dragon with the intention of taking the dragon. I think this is we're starting this dragon because we know we have our Vladimir here and can run your Zaya over, as you can see, on the side flank, which means that you're going to walk forward. Nice. Yeah, they're going to look to jump in. And he comes down and throws everything onto destroy. The shutdown's there. Aramar goes golden. There's going to be a massive lockdown on it to the tank. The Feather Storm comes up. The Feathers come back. And this is the fight. The GK needed to take control of the game. Forcing them away. GU chasing forwards. His battle's gonna just strip Tibbers off the map. But Decaps coming in forwards with that hook available. Eromar needs to be the target. Can they land that hook onto the onto the person they need? Not gonna be the case here for the it's moment. Mike is very it's heavily low. They get the cleanse off for the moment. He has got red white on bow. Very dangerous. Oh. Decap comes in with a flash. They can chase in. He's oh. dumped. He's finished. Step from below. As this is the double kill. This is the tidy up for GK. I'm absolutely loving the proactivity right here. Destroy had a fantastic positioning to not allow the entirety of GK to move forward. Elramir will make a last stand uh. there, try to steal the dragon, but he's gonna go down and meet his death. Seven, one, and four. Three, one, and seven. That GK bot lane is absolutely fantastic and honestly mega 
props to how they coordinated their ultimate so perfectly together to chain up the CC in a way where Destroy had no chance of replying with a pull. That's another bunch of kills going to the side of GK, especially to their bot lane. That is three dragons, one short of soul, which is going to be infernal. Absolutely huge when you have a Zaya. You can have your own infernum uh, without playing Aphelios for the side of GK. Uh, Rin? Rin? He just overextended. He's gone. There's no way he's going to be able Rin. to survive this one. The stopwatch comes in. Rin gets caught by the Hemo Plague. The rest of the team jumping in forward. So they're going to look to finish up the Lissandra. Sartorius misses the ultimate as they turn it around, finding two kills. But losing Rin, absolutely just a massive fumble. And Sartorius needs to be careful because the two AP threats are dead and he is itemized entirely for the two AP champions in the game. Yeah, luckily for him, that Aphelios has not taken off quite yet. Also, you do not have the best guns uh, if you want to take this fight. Let's have a look at the inventories right now and see what's happening because if we're going to talk business right here, it is bot lane versus top lane. It is Rin versus destroy. And this particular engage, Rin died, but then there were two that were traded over for the set of GK. So, so far, so good. I'm loving the proactivity. I just love the way this team is chaining up and gelling together in a way where they're willing to follow each other. Whether it's Decap making the move, whether it's Giyu flashing Timbers forward, whether it's Sartorius starting with an old, everyone follows up the play. And this is what differentiates a good team from a great team. The fact that yeah. you're willing to follow the call, whether it's the correct or the wrong call, the fact that you follow it up and you have that teamwork shows wonders. And so far, it's only given them advantages and positives on the map. As you can see, three dragons, 240 for the soul. They're going to clear up the top side of the map as well, try to threaten the Baron. They do have the Zanya in the mid lane, which means because that Vladimir doesn't have TP, they need to pull him from that bot side of the map, leaving Sartorius a little bit free air too far. Oh, Rin. Ends up losing a lot of health there. Bow just Gale forces into the pocket for the Infinity and does a whole bunch of damage. But that might just be an opportunity to get some pressure on the Baron. I don't think they're going to start it up, but they will at least try and just alleviate some of this vision control that has been afforded from this. But the cost of this vision control is going to be damage onto that tower, and this top bot lane tower will go down to Satorius. He's still got that teleport, so if Baron gets started, he can just TP in and look to set up for the fight. But now... Honestly, great. The great macro yeah. movement from, from yeah. GK right here. They're forcing Vladimir up. If Destroy is not there, Wildcats cannot fight because all of their money is onto this Vladimir. Guess what this Vladimir doesn't have? Teleport. Guess where this Vladimir has to be? Top side of the map. I think this is a little bit of a macro mishap from the set of Wildcats. They should have the Vladimir towards the top side of the map and Lissandra towards the bot. So if a Baron breaks out, that Lissandra can actually TP into the fight and you will know that you have your Vladimir up there. And through the top side of River as well, you can get a pretty good flank if enemy team starts uh, Baron and sort of kind of sandwich them as well. So, a little bit late to the party. Really great move from uh, GK to force Wildcats to play their game. So yeah, far, absolutely. It, it, it's been great because we've heard, hey, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of um, teams that could match GK over in the Arabic League. Fair enough. But these guys are playing against a team that's gone to Worlds, that's gone to MSI, that's played against the best of the best. It's and funny. they're playing them so well. I was going to mention this as well, because, you know, we talked about at the beginning of this game, but, you know, everyone's eyes very much on this on the uh, the TCL team and the team for, you know, are the, are the scary new team in the league. You know, for a long time, it's been talk about the LFL as being the scary team at this tournament. And obviously with the addition of both... Uh, the Arabic team and also the Turkish team. There was there was talks about, you know, the TCL was going to basically be a dominating force here. So it's amazing to see that our, our new Arabic team actually are the ones showing up in this game. Now, gold lead's not monumental. It's only 2,000. Uh, it's and a matter of where that gold is. Oh, I say oh. that! I was just about to say, destroy the one with the gold. But oh my word, they find the damage, they find the follow-up, and they do get themselves a shutdown onto Decap. But the Tivers is doing some work. They find a follow-up hook. Paris is just doing so much. He doesn't miss these hooks. 
that was absolutely fantastic to start off by Giyu. They taking off the danger at the very beginning. Yes, this one backfired because Actorius ended up going down as well, but Viking is still alive. If this Dragon starts up, Viking has the chance to steal. Oh, jumps in with the ultimate. They're going to get the damage off there. Up the moment, Viking's still pretty tanky. And Eremar has been forced away. Rin getting some of that health back. Clears through the tower, gets the damage off. The cleanse comes out, throws out the Feather Storm. Has got that Blade Cooler, but no one's in range right now. Viking's chasing them up. They are so unbelievably low. GU has no flash, but has the stun. Back onto the dragon. They're trying to see if they can get in range. Remember, this is so for GK. If they can get it, a Viking finds the steal. GU gets the stun off. The health bar are blinking as Wildcats That's limp That's out of the brain. pit. That is absolutely Baron for GK. Remember, Destroy just went back on the map. Kofi does have the teleport, but Bao needs to back for mana and HP together with powers, which means they get to start the Baron. Soul going over to GK. Fantastic steal by Viking. They're going to start up the Baron as well. Let's take a look at they what both are available. Lissandra ult, Lissandra ult, and Vladimir ult. They don't have smite. Viking doesn't have smite. Eremar could take this one away. I think with the flag going down, they recognize it and they look for it. They get the hook, they, they get the stun, they get the lockdown, destroy! It's flattened! Everything lands onto Bao! Eremar slides him forward, but that's gonna be the kill! Rin zoned away, but there is no one to threaten him as Kobe is buying time, gets the Thrill Man W, but it does mean nothing. That is definitely Baron for GK. My god, honestly, I feel like they've got like a heat seeking uh, sort of target right there on to destroy because every time he's walked up, their sole purpose has been to take destroy down. And to be honest with you, for a guy who's 3k up on the top side of the map, having zero impact on every single team fight is kind of disheartening uh, if you're Wildcat right here. Again, very nice target selection for the of GK. They see Vladimir, they kill Vladimir, they take Bao as well. We'll take those because that's your consistent damage gone out of the picture. And even though El Ramir is still alive, you're not going to get anywhere near this boost strength still Baron on the five members of GK still up and alive. Again, GK playing a very high tempo game, very high kills in your face, not allowing wildcats to scale. And again, that 3k gold difference between the top side of the map is starting to look like zero because the destroy cannot do any damage. Well, the last two fights he's just point? been instantly zoned out. The last two fights he just dies immediately. It's, yeah. it's, they have a, seek, a heat seeking Annie just constantly landing the stuns onto him. Playing so Satoris, well to make sure Satoris is being chilling. He got solo kill, he got ganked, he got dived, he built his double MR item, he's got another non magic uh, man in there. Oh, oh no. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> That's three in a row. Destroy was looking for maybe a flank, but he just gets caught. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what he okay, was doing there, I'm if I'm gonna, gonna be say, real with you. I'm not sure what the flank was doing right there because you're very far over extended for your team. Your team is literally playing inside the base because you've got no vision. Your Lissandra's in the bot lane. Maybe there's some miscommunication going in uh, into this one for Wildcats, but GK have got this game in their pocket. Oh, they've there it is. Baron. They've got their AD carry off their screens and they're taking that inhibitor. That is going to be it. Yeah, inhibitor goes down. Baron in the pocket of GK. I don't think they're going to overstay. Uh, the in the jungle they've got top lane pushing as well so they might as well take another one 20 seconds for bow destroy is up and he could look maybe for a frontal fight this time let's not take any risks uh by going into flanks the hook will miss it's gonna be pretty hard for them to do right there they do get the hook he gets the cleanse out immediately destroy slides in he's popped that ghost he's gonna try and keep the chase up but Jinyu able to keep himself alive for the moment. They throw everything down onto the destroy. There's the knockup. Satorius slides in. And Eremar can't find the damage onto Rin as Kofi does jump forward. They pull the feathers back. He jumps out to safety. The health bars are just evaporated as the Wildcats have no agency left. Wait. GK just died through the end. tower. I don't, I don't they, think they can end. They, got they have like a 10% HP pike and a 30% HP Malphite. The Thresh is up and alive. Yes, they do have burned up minions, but can they end? Because Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower. Halo Blade does not proc on to the tower.
They didn't they didn't necessarily get what they came for. They came for the second inhibitor tower and uh, possibly inhibitor towards the top side of the map. And this is a fat shutdown. I'm not sure who it went to. On to um, from the Zaya. Let's see again. So destroyer will walk forward. Does not take uh, he does not take the lantern that was very kindly provided to him by Powers, which means he ends up going down. Once he uses the pool, since there is no Zonius onto this Vladimir, uh, he ends up going down again. Red white doesn't do much right here because you have to go way too close to the Zaya. This Zaya is extremely fed, and the ghost of Lysandra, the passive rather ghosts do a lot of work in taking down that Annie, which means that potentially that was the only reason the game did not end up there. And then 7,000 gold though in the lead for GK and then looking for Destroy again. Yeah, Destroy is in a whole world of danger. They're going to wait out the catch-up puddle. But Satorius at this point, he's so tanky. Support build Malphite <laughs> he's taking with his the Locket Redemption. He is just so hard to kill. I love this build, man. <laughs> Oh. He's taking he's taking his revenge, you know. He says, Aphelios is not strong enough to touch me at this point. Level 15 Malphite versus level 13 uh, Aphelios. Bao has fallen massively behind in this one. So Sartorius does not really care about him. At this point, he cannot die on a side lane versus Destroy or Koftis. So he's sitting pretty comfortably with all uh, with every single MR item that he can purchase from the store. Absolutely. There's a few more, but yeah, a, a little bit of an I love this There's build, man. I love this build. Oh, Flash comes out from Val there. That's pretty early. Kofte jumps straight in. Rin feels pretty comfortable to hold for the moment. And that's going to be the Flash from Kofte and from Val. Burn uh, in the middle of that fight. And they did not hurt the health bars of GK. That's two huge all. ultimates, though, gone for both of these teams, t uh, destroy? destroy? No. No way. Oh, okay, he's fine. able to survive. Infernum comes down, it's not big. Bow tries to Gale Force out. Viking jumps onto the back line. Decap dunks him with one. He's able to get one onto Rin as well. He finds himself a double kill on the Zaya as Jin Yu will chase down Paris as he is going to get himself locked in. Tries to get the blast going away to safety. He's just going to give GK the odd run around. Honestly, Gin Yu will keep the pressure up. Finds himself the stun. The only reason they're chasing him is just so he doesn't stop the wave in the mid lane because they want to end on this one. GK, they put their foot down the metal and honestly, they never let go. Major props, destroy one last chance, oh. one last try, one last catch up puddle on the floor. What a fantastic game. What a fantastic debut yeah. from GK. Absolutely amazing de uh, debut there from GK. Destroy looks scary. He got ahead early on Vladimir. If a Vladimir gets ahead early, terrifying. Absolutely terrifying to be playing into. I don't know, man. It looked to me like the Vladimir didn't play the game. <laughs> he, By the way, he ended that game still 1,200 gold over there, Satorius. Nice. Like, he was 1,200 gold over. The problem is, is there was a 5k gold lead in the bot lane. And not just in the bot lane, 3.7k gold lead in the support role as well. I know Pike kind of inflates that because that's kind of what he does. But... Man, the gold lead was monumental. And like you said, GK, they just rock up to EMEA and shut down a team who everybody had their eyes on, on a region everybody had their eyes on. And they did it in style. That was an absolutely banger first game for uh, for the side of GK. I'm just very surprised and I have uh, questions. We'll have Viking with us in a little bit as well. As in, who's the shot caller? Who starts the fights? Because we saw multiple different people starting fights and potentially calling maybe through the fights where it was whether it was viking starting with the vir whether it was Torius with his ultimate whether it was yeah. giyu flashing forward for the tibers or maybe a pike uh hook as well it seemed like the team was willing to follow every single time now of course what? i don't know at which pace this can come to bite you in the butt because mm. if you go into in on every hook on every ult on every opportunity then your opponents can read you out wildcats did not seem to be able to to read out gk and honestly they were full gas from literally the second they went in the fact that they took that priority in the bot lane they took that vision off of their opponents costed the affairless and thresh the entire game well, to be honest, we can actually ask them about that game because we have a Viking standing by for an interview. Viking, hello, welcome, and first of all, congratulations. That was an absolute banger game. How are you guys feeling after that one? Yeah, we feel good. Uh, we were like confident uh, we probably will win if we have a good draft, and uh, we had a decent draft. Do you expect uh, Vladimir well? 
like they have a secret account on the uh, two Koreans and uh, what's called. Uh, but I think uh, our draft was uh, easy to play and uh, they have like a uh, bit uh, hard to play, especially when Botlin is behind. Like our Botlin played extremely well, but yeah, we played like pretty decent and uh, yeah, and we just won. Honestly, it was fantastic to see you guys follow each other. My question is, you were engaging, Toplin was engaging, flash tibers we saw, we saw hooks from Pike. Who's shot calling and who do you guys listen to when these calls come through? I mean, Satoris has done a lot and me, but I think uh, recently our support has stepped it up a lot. But I think like everyone is kind of doing their job now. Like... Uh, really happy and uh, proud that uh, everyone is like really trying to carry their uh, carry their own weight like doing their job and they're doing it everyone really good now and uh, you could see like uh, sometimes it was me sometimes it was Satorius sometimes it's Gyu sometimes it's Decap and uh, Rin like also like calls good stuff like at Baron is or Drake is like oh yeah smite at this and I'll get it Everyone is like confident and doing their job. So and like more than that, like Botlane should not be stomping this hard, right? Like our Botlane did a show, so it was really good from Botlane, especially. Yeah, it was actually ex extremely impressive to see you guys. I guess gelled up together so well. I had a lot about uh, your team saying, "Hey, we're just having the Arabic League, kind of like a practice. We're preparing more for EMEA Masters uh, to get there." And of course, this. Well, we're used to seeing you on the NLC, Viking. I'm not going to say I'm not sad yeah, to see you yeah. go. Miss you uh, too. But of Miss course, you coming too. back. Miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> coming, coming, of course, from the Arabic League and playing on your debut in the Arabic League, the league itself debuts in EMEA Masters, the Turkish League debuts in EMEA Masters, and you have such a fantastic and dominant performance. Do you think this will lift the spirits up for the entire team for the for the next games to come today? I mean, we're very confident for every game. Like, I think we can easily make it out of groups. Like, uh, if we have good drafts, like, uh, also depends how, how enemy draft. And uh, I think that uh, we have good chances, you know, to, like, do really well. So, yeah, I mean, Thanks, we're man. all that's happy. A lot of, that's a lot of coach pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, speaking of, course, of pressure, of because obviously... I mean, so speaking of pressure, because obviously we're talking about, you know, you being part of a region now that has made is making their debut do you feel did this game feel like there was maybe a little bit more pressure on your shoulders because it was two of the new regions going toe to toe and you're representing one of those regions did you feel maybe a little bit nervous than maybe you normally would be going into this game or were you just pretty cool and collected for this one uh cool and collected i think like we just think about doing good performance uh mina fans are like really supportive and stuff what i've seen so far and uh like if I make them happy, like that's something I like as a person. I want to make, uh, I want to make myself proud and uh, also make like if I can other people happy too, you know. So of course that's like really fun if I help the reach and grow as well, uh, and the team. But not really any pressure. I just think like, yes, doing well is important, and uh, like I want to like do really well at the Masters as a team. Awesome. Well, Viking, congratulations on the win. And uh, thank you for joining us for this interview. Good luck with all your upcoming games. And we will maybe speak to you soon. Speak to you later, mate, right? Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Awesome. Nice to hear um, there from Viking. Does it so feel nice weird? From him. Does it feel weird, Viking, not in the NLC? <clears throat> A little bit. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> it does. It definitely. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll obviously always miss the guy, but uh, it was a banger game. It was a really, really banger game coming in from these guys. And this bot lane, they look like something really formidable right now. Yeah. Rin, very, very crisp on the Zaya. Really, really I'm crisp. telling you, I'm telling you, th this was a bot lane gap and Rin got hooked twice in this in this 2v2s the and they still came up ahead. Had he not, it would have been like even more crisp and clean. But I'm going to give it to the team and possibly 
the coaching staff behind them for going into this game with a very clear plan. And the clear plan was get that bolt in ahead. We have a pike for a reason. That pike snowballed, the Zaya snowballed, they took them all around the map. And honestly, what was even more impressive for me was that in every single fight, they found the Vladimir and the dispatch of him before anyone else. They're like, our only threat for our team is that Vladimir. Before we start the fight, we need to make sure he's dead. He was dead every single time before any fight. Uh, kind of ominous because he goes down in this fight as well. I mean, it's, it's crazy it just as well. Because the amount they actually committed to the Vladimir, like in this clip alone, we saw Satori Assault, we saw um, the Pike ult. Obviously, the Pike ult resets, but you also saw the Annie ult come down. And like, again, yeah, another one. you see, they throw everything down onto him, but it just felt Honestly? like Wildcats had no answer. And Honestly, GK if production could just wanted to do him up. dirty, if production wanted to do him dirty, they would compile uh, all the clips where he just gets one shot by Come on, man. It's his first day. It's his first day. We can't be bullying okay, him sorry, on his first I'm day. I'm sorry. You're right. Go on. I mean, to be fair, uh, GK did the bullying here. That, that's just... Destroy just didn't get to play for like the last 15, 20 minutes of this game. Like, it felt like every time he tried to step up, he'd get absolutely melted. Ooh. And look at that gold swing. Look at that damage spread. 31k coming out from Rin on the Zaya. We talked about Zaya being very strong. This is kind of why we expect to see a lot of bans on her today. Yeah, I actually really love to see that the Annie... Uh, came in clutch as well because I think the flash T-Bears were always on point from Giyu. And potentially, again, we saw a draft where like Zaya Rakan were both almost going to go through. They decided not to go with it. They chose the Annie together with the Vi and it just looked crisp because they're like, destroying the top lane plays a Picaris. If we have a lot of buttons that can stun him in place or we can even reach the affiliates with, it's going to make our life easy. And it just worked. They chained one after the other after the other and they absolutely decimated them. Well, it's time for us to take a break. And when we're back, we'll be back with Team Go versus Anorphosis Famagusta. So we'll see you for game three.